Welcome to the Google Classroom series. If you're wondering how you can duplicate a class and get easily started for next year's classes, then check out this tutorial. Melissa is going to take us through how she sets up, duplicates a class and sets it up for next year. Hi, my name is Melissa Aki. I'm one of the mathematics teachers here at ABA. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you how I use Google Classroom. And I'm going to start with the end, which is at the end of the school year, I get ready for the next school year by just copying the existing Google Classrooms that we already have. So for example, Mr. Sin has been teaching analysis this year. And I just found out that I will also be teaching analysis, but I don't want to start from scratch when I make my Google Classroom. So I'm going to go to Mr. Sin's Google Classroom. So all I did is I went to Classes. I clicked on Classes. And he already sent me an invitation so that I'd have access to it. So since I have access to his Google Classroom, I'm able to go in as a teacher and I could say, let me just make a copy. And then when I make the copy, uh, I can change it to my name. And then that way, next year, my Google Classroom is all set to go based on what he's already created, and I don't have to start from scratch. Now, I don't know the name of my course next year, but that's no big deal. Next year, I'll just change anything that needs any editing. So I can go ahead and start typing that I have analysis, SL. And later, uh, I could go ahead and put my room number, but it might change. But again, I can always edit if I need to. And now, I've taken Mr. Sin's Google Classroom for grade 11 analysis, and the system is creating a whole new one just for me to use, and I don't have to start from scratch. But the thing I really like is when Google Classroom is making this copy, everything that he has in his Google Classroom is in draft form. Google Classroom is making a copy. Let's see if it's done making that copy for me. Looks like it is. Notice all of those folders that already existed for Mr. Sin. They now exist in my copy so that I can start saying, which things do I want my students to see on day one? So I can just say edit. And I can say post it now. And now they'll be able to see the grade boundaries the minute they walk into the, the minute they join the Google Classroom. But anything else that's grayed out, they won't see it automatically. They'll see it when I want them to see it. So I'll probably spend the next, I'll probably spend the rest of today going through this and taking a quick look to see which things I want to go ahead and post now so that as soon as they join, they can see it. But they don't need to see grade 12 information about calculus or grade 12 information about probability until we get there. So I won't release those yet. That's how easy it is for me to get started. So if you're going to be teaching a course where somebody else has already been setting up a Google Classroom, I would highly recommend that you get in touch with that person and have them invite you as a teacher. And then you can go into classes, you can make a copy, and then you don't have to start from scratch. Now, you'll still have to do some editing. So for example, under people, I'm the only teacher in this course right now. So I might want to go ahead and invite Mr. Sin, since he invited me to his class. I might let him have access to mine if he's interested. I'll probably also invite Lena in the learning support because I have a lot of students that uh, have learning support needs and so it makes it easier on her so she can see everything. And then next year, as soon as I get my student roster, I just click on add students and I start typing in their names and as long as they're in iSAMS and they're in the system, their names would auto-populate. Now, at the beginning of next year, I would have to remember to also nag some of the students because some of them, they get an invitation, but they don't always accept it. So sometimes I have to send them another email or email their parents reminding them, you need to accept the invitation so that you can actually use Google Classroom. I put Criterion A, MYP reference materials, talk about the calculator, miscellaneous, but just lots of different resources. But I also include for students who are getting ready for analysis versus students who are getting ready for applications. And then again, I, got their, I have their units and so on. Now, I won't be teaching grade nine next year, but what I will do is I'm going to make four copies of this because there are going to be four sections of grade nine next year for mathematics. So I will go in here and I will click on one of my grade nine classes. But first, I would tidy it up. I'd make sure that, I, OK, are there any more resources I want to add? I'd get all my resources added. And I would do that same thing I did earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and make four copies so that the other teachers are all set to go. So I'll add them in, and then they can take control of it uh, next year. Uh, not only will I make copies for the next grade nine teacher so that they don't have to start from scratch, I can also go into my grade nine classes, and I can come up to settings. I change the name and I call it grade 10 and now I'm ready to just move on with that Google Classroom. 
So hopefully, someone else has already made a Google Classroom and you have very little to do. You just have to make a copy and release, post whatever items you think are ready to be posted right away. And then later, post more items. Hopefully that gives you a quick overview. Thank you to Melissa. Make sure you check out this video if you want to learn how to reuse posts and how you can schedule to multiple classes at once.